Before I go into the details of how this YubiKey attack works, I want to first explain what is needed to extract the private key from a YubiKey so you can answer the question for yourself. Is the YubiKey still secure? First, the adversary needs the username and password of an account protected with FIDO2 using your YubiKey. Second, the adversary needs physical access to your YubiKey. Third, and this is the hard part, they'll have to tear down the YubiKey, hook it up to some very sensitive lab equipment that can measure the electromagnetic output of the key while sending repeated authentication requests as many times as necessary while performing side channel measurements. And if you have a FIDO2 pin set up on your YubiKey, they'll need that too. By now, some of you might be asking if they have all that, why bother with extracting the key when they can just log in by using the key? Well, now you see why this is more about some brilliant academic research. And while attacks only get better over time, right now, this is a very, very impractical attack, especially because you know, it requires the key. But let's talk about the details now. For those not familiar, the YubiKey is a hardware security key designed to provide strong security for two-factor authentication and other cryptographic operations. When you register a YubiKey with a FIDO-compatible service, your device generates a pair of cryptographic keys. The public key is stored on the service's server, while the private key remains securely stored on the YubiKey. This private key is set when your YubiKey is made and cannot be changed. Also, before the publication of this attack vector, there was not a known way to extract the key from the YubiKey. The attack works by capturing and analyzing the electromagnetic emissions emitted by the YubiKey while it's performing cryptographic operations. This research proved that by carefully analyzing the patterns in these emissions, an attacker can extract the keys. The reason this attack is called Euclid is that they are deriving a key from what is called Euclidean division leakage. This is a specific type of side channel attack. This leakage occurs when a device performing a division operation by analyzing its physical characteristics in the case electromagnetic output of the device while performing FIDO key operations, it will allow the private key to be inferred once enough data has been collected from the repeated use of the key, applying a sophisticated algorithm to the collected data. The way security modules are hardened against this type of attack is by using constant time algorithms that take the same amount of time to execute regardless of the input values, which eliminates those variations. While many of the functions in YubiKey are using proper time constant implementations, the researchers were able to find a flaw in the nonce modular inversion process where this was not properly implemented. While YubiKey was the focus of their research due to its popularity in the security industry, the vulnerability is in the cryptographic libraries of an Infineon Technologies component which is used by YubiKey and likely many other manufacturers. All YubiKey 5 series with firmware versions before 5.7 are impacted by the attack, and in fact, all Infineon security microcontrollers, including a lot of TPMs that run the Infineon cryptographic library, could also be impacted. While there are not any known methods to update the firmware in the YubiKey, which makes replacement the only option, I am not going to replace mine anytime soon due to the noted requirements and the complexity of the attack. So this is not something that you necessarily need to worry about that much unless your threat model is someone taking the key, knowing your PIN, knowing your user and password, and wanting to clone the key and give it back to you so they'd have an extra copy of it. And when you think about that from a threat scenario, Pretty much not likely, but hey, I do want to hear from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below where we can have a little bit more in-depth discussion on this. Let me know if you want to replace your key or not, or head on my forums where we can get deeper into the technology of this and make sure you read through all these publications as you'll find linked in the description because why not read more on this? It's really some brilliant research. I found it really fascinating, and uh, I think you might too. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. See you online. Thanks.